Hello, I'm Katherine Hollenrake and I photograph people. I'm not photographing people right now, of course, because we're not allowed to be near each other. So, like many people, I find myself participating in a lot of video conference calls. And it occurred to me that what I'm effectively looking at is a lot of video portraits. And it also occurred to me that video portraits share a lot of aesthetic considerations with still portraits or profile pictures. So ideally, your video conference presence is going to support your professional brand the same way your profile picture would. From what I'm seeing, I think some people could still use a little help, and so I've got a few tips for you. The four things I want to touch on are the background, framing, lighting, and your connection to the internet. Okay, so background. So like many people, I do not have a beautiful, aesthetically pleasing, tidy, perfect little spot to do video conferencing, so I had to set something up. So basically, you want to make sure that your background is simple, not distracting, and on brand. Or at least not way off brand. In my case, I decided to just buy a really inexpensive five by seven foot green screen, which is basically just a piece of green fabric that I hung up behind me because it facilitates putting in a virtual background, which is really easy to do in Zoom and Skype and probably other programs as well. If you don't wanna to have to deal with a green screen, you can also just use a plain white bed sheet or really any plain background if you wanna be able to knock it out and replace it with a virtual one. The only caveat is that you just have to make sure you don't wear anything that's the same color as your sheet or your green fabric because when you go to replace it with your virtual background, the part of you that is the color of your actual background will also get replaced with the virtual background. One more thing about the background, in terms of a virtual background, if you're going to choose a nice room photograph or something like that to put behind you, a couple of things you can do, either get one online that's royalty free, or you can take your own picture somewhere in your house of a nice little nook or something. Just make sure it's really simple, not a lot of distracting interior design in it. And if you can, maybe blur it out just a little bit so that it, it's, so the focus is on you and your face and not what's behind you. In my case here, I just have an out-of-focus picture that I took of my studio windows. So you could even do something like that in your own home. Find somewhere that's really simple and clean, but maybe isn't conducive to your actually sitting there for your conference call. And just pop that in using the virtual background setting in the Skype or Zoom or whatever. Another thing you can use as a physical or a virtual background is curtains. Sometimes I use these ones, although the pattern is a little busy. So framing, um, I am seeing a lot of this, a lot of extra headroom and it's just distracting. <laughs> See how there's just a little bit of room here? This is good. This is just distracting. So don't do that, do this. <sighs> Another thing with regard to framing is the camera that you're using for your video conference call. What you wanna do is you wanna make sure that the camera is either level with your eye or it's looking down on you a bit. So put it on a pile of books, put it on a shelf, anything to make sure that your webcam is looking either straight at or down on you. The last thing you wanna do is have it looking up at you. It's incredibly unflattering and it's really distracting and weird to look at people's ceilings, which I'm seeing a lot of. The other thing you wanna do is make sure that you put the window that you're looking at up as close as possible to your camera so that when you look at the person you're talking to, it will appear to them as if you're looking straight at them because your eye line is aligned with your webcam. Lighting wise, the most important thing is to have nice light coming towards you on your face, so not coming from behind you. I think a lot of people have figured out that windows are a really great natural light source. Unfortunately, I also think a lot of the webcams are just not capable of handling the amount of light that comes from a window if you're sitting quite close to it. So a couple of recommendations there. Either sit a little further away from the window or put something between that window and you to just cut down the light a little bit. So for example, you could just get like pieces of eight and a half by 11 inch white letter paper and just stick them to the window. 
Or you could do something like get a standing lamp and just attach paper to it and just put it between you and that window just to cut that light down a little bit so you're not all burnt out and washed out. For anyone who doesn't have a readily available natural light source like a window, I came up with a bit of a hack that you might want to try. All you do is you take a tablet or a phone and you take a picture of a piece of white paper. I recommend that you run a little bit of a filter on it just to make it a little more warm in tone. And then you just cast this picture to your TV. and it's like a big, beautiful soft box. Just remember to rotate your picture so it's horizontal, so it'll fill as much of your TV screen as possible. Then you just have to figure out what to put behind you for your background. Here's a little extra tip I just wanted to throw out there. If your laptop is a little bit older like mine, you might find that the internal camera is pretty low quality. So I prefer to use just an inexpensive web camera. This is just a little Logitech web camera. I've had it for years, but it gives me a much nicer color balance and much better sharpness than my laptop camera does. And finally, my last tip. You may have seen some instances of your or someone else's video freezing or cutting out intermittently during a video conference call. That's most likely because you're using a Wi-Fi or wireless connection to the internet as opposed to wired. Because of the large number of Wi-Fi networks in the city, there are serious bandwidth limitations. The large number of users competing for space on the same wireless spectrum has a huge impact on real-time video streaming. The only way to get around this is to use a wired connection in the form of an Ethernet cable. If your computer doesn't have an Ethernet port, you just need to get an adapter, and then you can wire your computer directly to your router. I know that for many people, thinking about how to look better in your video conference calls is just not a welcome addition to your to-do list. But I really believe it will serve you in the long run to know that you are showing up looking confident and professional. I hope this has been helpful. Let me know if you have any questions, and I look forward to seeing you online.